What's up, Scoop Podcast? I'm your host, Erica Krupen, and on today's episode, we have a special guest all the way from Canada. We have Justin on the pod. What's up, Justin? I'm well. How are you? I'm good. I'm good. I wanted I'm you to say of... something Canadian. Oh, oh, so, well, sorry, eh? If I didn't uh, start off right, I got to meet all your criteria. I didn't stop at the Tim Hortons to get my coffee beforehand. I'm sorry. And any other it. thing? I don't play hockey, so I'm I'm I, I'm not a hockey fan, so I'm a bad Canadian in that regard. But other than that, you know, I make up for it by eating fries with gravy and cheese en masse. So you know. Now, do you guys call your gravy? Is it poutine? Is that what you? So have? there's poutine. If you're if you're Quebecois like myself, and French is like your mother tongue language, it's poutine, um, which is hilarious because if you watch French news, little inside joke here, that's also how they spell the Russian president's name, and that's not how his name is spelt, but they just ah. they just call him that. So he's poutine over there. It's great. That's actually really interesting. Thanks for letting us know that. It's, uh, insider info, man. That's what we're here for. <laughs> when I went and visited Jess from pause to bark uh i ordered a dish and it had like fries and like some cheese curds and then the the poutine and i was just staring at it and i took one bite and i was like i didn't want to be rude you know but i was like i can't eat this i can't do it because i'm not a gravy person <laughs> okay <laughs> now 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 the crazy thing is if you go in other parts of the country you'll have spin-offs of that if you go to newfoundland there's little versions of it called newfie poutine where i've heard that other ingredients are added to it such as like stuffing like for turkey oh. yeah they, they get a little wild over there but all uh, right yeah i, yeah. I, I can do that th to each their own all right. Well, I'm glad we talked about food before we got into the talk about poo, because that's what you're here for. You own a dog waste removal business. It's called Poop Troops Cornwall. That's so right. close. Pooper Troopers. But you, you got the right idea. It's all good. Oh, like, on, Facebook, it, <laughs> on Facebook, it says Poop Troop Cornwall. So, so that's because Facebook has a character limit, you see. <laughs> oh. And if I go the full name, it doesn't fit. <laughs> And I think somebody already had pooper troopers, so I had to specify. I'm like, I'm going to be super niche because this is the area I service. But that's okay. I'm not going to fault you for that. Okay, that's good. Facebook's fault, not yours. Goodness gracious! Yeah, I, I got to pull it together. All right, increase well, your I character limit, Zuckerberg. Anyway, yeah. Anyway. <laughs> What's up with that, Zuck? <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, tell us how did how did you get into business? How did it get started? Well, this, you know, shameless self-promotion, I would say. That's because of you. But, uh, you know, I was listening to this uh, lovely little podcast that I still listen to to this day by a uh, by a bald fellow named Nick Loper called The Side yeah. Hustle Show. He was um, here in Michigan and, not too long ago. Small world, man. And, uh, and of course, you were featured on it. And ironically, around the time that you were featured, um, my nephew was mowing lawns. Uh, he's since not done that anymore. Um, and I was asking him how it was doing, you know, being a fellow young entrepreneur, teenager who mowed lawns and all that himself to kind of pay the bills over the summer and have money for things that you want, disposable income. And, uh, and he said, well, you know, it's good. Just the, the one thing I always seem to have to try to avoid is, is, is stepping in dog poop from people who have it. He goes, you know, you think there may be, might be some kind of business, you know, that, that, where someone would take care of that. And then we just kind of looked at each other for a few seconds. <laughs> it was just like, you thinking what I'm thinking? And uh, sure enough, I had this thought in the back of my mind, of it, not thinking that it was an actual industry, right? And I think within a week of having that conversation, your episode aired. I listened to it. And to me, that was like, um, um, the, I feel like, you know, I don't believe the universe always sends us signals, but this one seems almost too good to pass up. So sure enough, I started consuming your YouTube content. And then uh, in early 2020, right in the pandy, great time to start a business, by the way, uh, I decided to launch small time since I had some time on my hands. And uh, and sure enough, four years later, hard to believe, and uh, here we are. Still, still a side hustle though. Still working my way up, little by little, climbing that ladder. You know, maybe a quarter rung at a time. But uh, but here we are. So interesting fact about the side hustle nation is I listened to that when I was working my hospital job on midnights. Started my business, and then there was just something like pulling on my heart. I'm like you should reach out to them, see if you can be on their podcast. And I kind of him and hawed for a while. I'm like, no, I'm too new in business. I shouldn't really talk about it yet. Why are they going to want me on their pod? 
And I remember sitting down on my couch. I, I pulled out my little turquoise laptop that I had to finance, by the way, because I didn't have enough money <laughs> to actually pay to pay for it in full. Yep. It was it was flex pay three of them for ninety nine dollars a month. Ooh. And I uh, I sent I sent the uh, the email and they responded back to me. And then I got on that pod. And I'm so grateful that I did, because that has reached so many people. And I it blows my mind. Absolutely. I, I'm so happy. And I heard the thing of like, who wins when you succeed? And so I just play that in my head. I'm like, Erica, if you wouldn't have done that podcast, so many people wouldn't have known about this business. And I, butterfly effect, was. right? You think about like that, that small little mark that you left, you know, has kind of spurred out and do this thing. You know, oddly enough, I was going to bring this up and save it for the end of the episode so that I can like give you your flowers, so to speak. Aww. But, but yourself and, and, and other, there are also a few content creators out there like Anthony and, and, yeah. and a couple of others that I've followed. You, I don't think you guys realize just how much of an effect that you've had. Like I, you know, we wouldn't be having this conversation if it wasn't for that at a bare minimum, let alone a heavy portion of the past four years of my life. Like it's, it's a big deal. So, and, and I appreciate you guys spending all that time and putting it all that content because not everybody has to do that. You know, it's not like every, you know, uh, bucket Bob or scoop at Steve, which I still kind of fall into that priority are, are, are making content and putting it out there, but you guys are, you're actually sharing the process. Not everybody's willing to open their doors like that. So, you know, huge kudos to you for doing that because we wouldn't be here otherwise. So I'm going to put you in your, I'm going to put you in your fields now. I'm sorry. <laughs> And I'm just thinking about it. And like with Anthony, he, his, um, his editing skills and the way that he storytells, I love his, his stuff. Yep. And then Courtney just released a, something like a video over on her TikTok, and she's hilarious. And I'm just like, yes, I love seeing other people making, um, crappy content out here. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's great. All right. Well, let's talk about the last four years. So let's go all the way back to 2020. What was it like getting started during the pandy? Incredibly uncomfortable. Um, <laughs> the first client I had, because I, we started off, you know, small scale, and this is before Zucks got a little wild on marketplace. Um, and by wild, I mean, restricting wise, uh, mm -hmm. you could, you could plug a service on there. Not like you can now you got to be a little, you know, tongue in cheek. Erica knows what I'm talking about. Uh, and yeah. yeah, so I put a little posting like, Hey, let's see what happens, you know, do a little basic graphics, things like that. And sure enough, I, a few people hit me up. Of course you get, you know, negative comments and things like that. Actually, I think the first thing I did even before that was I ran a little survey on like my city's open Facebook page. Hey, if this started, would anyone be interested? And like the amount of people that were like, no and no and for asking you know what i mean like it's like okay <laughs> and i was like and you would think most people would be deterred but i was like no, i'm gonna lead into this let's let's yeah. see where this goes and sure enough i got some you know people that hit me up in the dms and we sorted that out and the first job i did was uh oddly enough for a, a lady on behalf of her brother because he was not well so and you know we took care of it this tiny little area, very messy. We don't need to go into the details, but after that, she was like, you guys are, you guys are a blessing, right? It was amazing. And of course that brother, apparently I don't think lived too much longer after that. So sad story, but we were happy that we were able to take care of that and, and, and kind of help her in trying to rehome the dogs after the fact too. So that, you know, we're glad that that worked out, so to speak in the end, given the the circumstances. And then from there, it, it kind of turned into, okay, how many more of these can we do? Of course, bearing in mind that I was working a job, um, even through the pandy. So my schedule shifted a little bit. I had a bit more free time than I normally would have had otherwise, but much like everybody else, you take advantage of that. You spend time with your kids and that. So, um, I'd say we, we started to generate a few regular clients. It was, it was a test year. I, I took 2020 as let's test this out. And if nothing comes of it, we're, we're not going to take on debt for doing this. We're going right. to keep it super small scale, hence the bucket bob and scoop at Steve terminology. Mm -hmm. And I think we did like our revenue over the course of that first year was like $7,500. It, it wasn't very much, but it was enough to say, okay, this could be a thing if someone were to actually apply themselves yeah. and see what the market really is. So continued onwards. Obviously, November is where things just kind of stopped because winter is not kind over here. Uh, I have a big problem in retaining clients on a regular basis because it doesn't take long. 
where you can't get someone's gate open, let alone get into the yard with the amount of snowfall that we can sometimes have. So that's a common problem. So a lot of our service gets shut down in November. This is the first year, actually, side note, where I've actually still retained some clients and I'm still taking care of them through the winter. It's a first for us. So I like that it's a fun little experiment. But in uh, 2021, we launched again in the spring, put more effort into it, doubled our revenue that year. And then 2022 and 2023 were about the same. Uh, not quite doubled the previous year, but not too bad either. It's to where I can look at this and say, wow, this is okay. This is, this is working. And I still don't feel like I've fully applied myself yet compared to other people in the industry who talk about having marketing budgets and, and, uh, and, and all these other overheads and things like that. I'm like, I'm a dude with a Hyundai. And I'm um, got my bin <laughs> in my trunk. I have to remember before I start my day to take my baby stroller out of the back. You know what I mean? Like it's, it's, it's tough. So I I'm still in side hustle territory, but it's, it's good to see that that growth has paid off and the persistence has paid off rather to generate more growth. And now I'm in a position where I have a couple of uh, part-time uh, people who take care of the scoops during the week so that I don't have to do it at night. Cause I, uh, I don't think I need to tell you that doing so in the dark very difficult. <laughs> yeah. Did you have a headlamp on your head ever? You're darn right I have headlamps. <laughs> You're so darn funny. tootin' I got headlamps. I got that full 170 degree, you know, like I'm copying LeVar Burton from Star Trek on there. It is ridiculous. So bright. <laughs> so it's 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 caused some problems. You get a neighbor that's like, what's going on in that backyard? <laughs> So, right. Thinking you're so I'm, I'm glad that we haven't really needed to use them this year because I now am in a position to where I can have people go in the morning as opposed to mm -hmm. rushing out of my office at, you know, 5 p.m. or later and try to get the two or three or four or whatever scoops that I have done before it gets absolutely bloody freezing cold and completely pitch black out. Although in Canada, by the time you hit 4 p.m. this time of year, it's dark. So, mm -hmm. yeah, it's and not fun. What does it look like for your staff? Um, what happens if one of them call in or they're sick? What do you do? How do you handle um, it? I'll, I'll, because we're so small and because uh, our schedule is so straightforward, it's never really been an issue. That's cool. Although in, I think like the one or two circumstances, it's, it's happened to where something's come up. I've just taken care of it. It's just, it's been a simple case of, hey, you know, Mr. And Mrs. Client, I realize we're set for Friday, but, you know, buddy has got, you know, whatever that is, the flu or whatnot. Is it okay if I either come over this evening or I take care of it bright and early tomorrow morning so you can still enjoy your weekend? And the answer has always been yes, because we're Canadian. Uh, so. <laughs> and you're communicating. That is the important part too. You're reaching out, you're letting them know what the issue is and how you're going to resolve it for them. And yes. I think so many home service providers don't do those steps. Yes, absolutely. And, and I need to stress the importance of this. I, I realize that this might be harder for people that have roots with multiple clients. Um, so maybe it's just me being extra fortunate because I don't have that amount of volume. But when you get something like that, it's a phone call. It's, it's a text doesn't always suffice. It is a phone call oh. or, or if you're clever and sometimes I am, uh, I have little, not group chats, but I have little lists that I've saved. So this, if I do this, this goes to my Monday clients. If I do this, this goes to my Tuesday clients. So in one fell swoop, I could say, Hey, I'm going to call you shortly, but I have an issue and your scoop may have to be postponed, but I will call you shortly and we'll discuss. And then. <laughs> I make those calls. So, well, that's good. So, you're not afraid of the phone then? Because, no, you can't be afraid of the phone. No, you it's, can't. And I think that maybe that's my generation. I mean, let's be real. Have you, I don't, I'm going to put you on the spot. Go have ahead. you ever had that awkward conversation with your significant other about, oh, let's say we're going to order food? Okay, well, who's going to call? I don't want to call you call. Well, you, I don't want to call you call. Like, we're afraid of a phone call to get something to, for us. <laughs> It's very strange. So I'm the extrovert in the relationship. And, uh, but there's times where I become very introverted. And then I tell Josh, be like, you got to handle this. Like, I just can't do it. And he looks at me like I have four eyes. He's like, what do you mean? Like, yeah. what do you mean you can't call? I'm like, I don't know. Just something's going on. I can't do it right now. So then he's put in the position and I like to watch him because he clears his voice. He'll go. <clears throat> 
And then he'll start speaking and I can just tell how uncomfortable he is, but it's important. He needs to be able to pick up the phone and make the phone calls. Yes. Yes. You got to get, you got to prep yourself up. You got to psych yourself up. You got to have that Bret Hart energy. That's, that's the thing. You got to get yourself ready. <laughs> oh, he loves Bret Hart. That's why I made the reference. <laughs> Mr. Mr. Producer, I'm going to uh, remind me to send you a photo to insert into the video of my husband dressed up as Bret Hart. There are several. Several. He, <laughs> he, he looks more like Bret Hart right now than Bret Hart does. Yes. Yes. <laughs> yes. All right. So you're working your, your full-time job, your day job, you have scoopers out running your business. Mm -hmm. Uh, How are you spending time with your family while maintaining all this? It's, it's limited, not going to lie. Being, having the day job that I have in the construction industry, it can be very time consuming. I'm fortunate in that regard that I have an employer that is very accommodating with that. And they are family oriented first. I mean, we probably wouldn't be having this conversation where I am right now, had it not been for that. The time thing obviously can be difficult. You know, most days I'll get home somewhere between five and six, sometimes later. And you just try to maximize that time. You know, I don't get me wrong. Yeah, I've, I've had my issues too, where I have to tell myself, hey, you get home, the boots come off, the coat comes off, you go upstairs, you put your phone on yes. the end table, and that little thing stays there for the next two, two and a half hours, whatever it is, because we've got, you know, we got a meal we got to have, which might be warmed up in the microwave if you're me by that point, because everybody's eaten. We got, you know, a couple of games to play. I introduced my kids to Mario Party. So now I've created that problem for myself because they love playing it. Uh, or we'll do a board game or we'll play, you know, you know my, my, my now six-year-old, I introduced him to Magic the Gathering a year ago for any nerds out there. I didn't think he was going to be that good. So now he beats me all the time and it's terrible. But you make time for that, right? And then you got bath time, story time, all those things. You still need to focus on having that energy. And to be honest, if I ever came to a point where I had to say either the business is going to suffer or my family's going to suffer, I'm sorry. but there will be no more troopers. That's uh, you gotta make the proper decisions to focus on what is most important to you. And if family is not the most important thing to you, I don't know what to tell you. So. Yeah. And it's, it's hard to kind of get in the zone because you start thinking about your business, you're thinking about all the things. And then all of a sudden, you know, then your partner or your kids or whatever, they're like knocking on the door. They're being like, Hey, you know, I want to talk to you. And I've caught myself like telling my husband, like, hold on a second and like not paying attention to him. And it, it caused issues. It did. Mm-hmm. It caused like uh where we weren't, we weren't vibing. Like we weren't mm-hmm. connecting. And I just had to realize like, okay, Erica, like you said, you got to take the phone. You got to put it on. Do not disturb. You got to put it away. Cause family is, is incredibly important. Cause if you don't have that support system, what's the point of having everything else? Exactly. And, and in credit to my wife in that regard, where, where she's been, you know, the, the stronghold, she is the, the, the quintessential stay at home mom. I know that no matter what happens, whether it's at the day job or out in the field scooping or anything like that, she's got the house on lock. Like, and, and I always try to tell her like, listen, make, can we make time for you? Mm -hmm. to do you things because I never want you to feel where you're in a position to be like, I'm just the mom. You know what I mean? Like what else is there? Like do you stuff, you know? And, and to her credit, she's even stepped in and said, how can I help you? I love that. With this. I love that. So I've been teaching her how to use Jobber. Hint, hint. We're getting Woo! her integrated into that. She's proactively taking on this role of like, how can I help in the field from the office so that you can, we can focus on growing this clientele. And you don't have to make all these phone calls while you're at your day job. Like, let's, let's do this. So she's taking a much, uh, yeah, she's really diving into it this year. I wasn't prepared for that, but I'm, I'm happy it's happening. <laughs> I love it. How is she doing with Jabber? Is she um, learning it pretty quick? There's so much yeah. to learn. Yeah, I, I I realized a mistake or two in the pro in the process, and I said, "Oh, I forgot to do this." And then within like two minutes, she goes, "I think I did it. Can you just check real quick?" <laughs> and sure enough, it was good. So it's fantastic. It's it's a pretty. I find that it's easy to use, but I also yeah. use it in my day job. So I'm basically the jobber guy at my day job. So I use it all day long. So it's. I just discovered tags, so we've been going through yes. and really doing some damage with the tags, which I'm very excited about. Yeah. Yeah. What's, what's, what's your, uh, what's your go-to for stuff like that? 
when a lead's coming in, um, I want them, because not, I'm not going to win all the leads, especially with my prices being higher. I'm not getting as much, uh, you know, approvals or whatnot, yeah. but we're, we're tagging them. If somebody requests a spring clean or a one-time clean, that way this time next year, I can market to them and I can just, you know, export them and be like, all these people, transfer them over to, what is it, MailChimp? And yeah. send them the, um, the hey, springtime is upon us. Yes. Whatever I actually looks like. I just sent my first email of that kind to all yeah. of my clients from this past year. Made a nice little letterhead in Canva, things like that. Yeah. <laughs> and I said, hey, just wanted to give you an overdue thank you for this past year and stuff. And we wouldn't be here without you guys. Credit to my team for doing their part. I'm so glad that you guys are tipping them. It's They appreciate it. We appreciate it because that always goes to them dollar for dollar. We don't mess around. Uh, and, and getting them ready for the new year. I took advantage of that and said, so get your requests in now. And by the way, if you leave me a five-star Google review, because you know, we earned it, I'll remember that when it comes time for your invoice next time around, like just a little, Hey, and so far I sent that email just a few days ago, uh, to service that and notifying them of a price increase because four years at the same rates, ah, it's time for an increase. Um, and since that time, I've been getting jobber notifications, people submitting their requests, and I get the notifications about five-star reviews on Google. So don't be afraid to send those emails out. You never know what can happen. And communicate. How uh, how are you sending those emails individually or through MailChimp? I, I don't use MailChimp or anything like that. This is the first of its kind. So I said, I'm going to do it myself. Uh, mm -hmm. Drafted a nice little email. And then I created my email list using uh, Google Contacts or whatever. So I went, I sifted through them. I'm like, okay, well, this person's going to get it. This person's going to get it. So I created my own little list. And then I emailed to that list. BCC, obviously. So not everybody needs to see each other. Duh. And then uh, sure enough, yeah, it went out to everyone. And uh, so far, so good, I would say. Did you send it through uh, your Google account or did you send it through Jabber? Just regular, just regular Gmail. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Because if you send. I, I don't know if, does Jabber allow for formatting? I guess I should have checked that first, huh? <laughs> I don't know. All I know is my virtual assistant, when they sent out my rate increase letters, they, I don't understand ex spreadsheets. <laughs> I can't do it. I don't know. So they took care of it. It was nice because it went through Jabber and then I could see who opened it because it shows in that customer communication. Very handy. Yes. Always so. true. You, you, you catch some, uh, some, some liars from time to time with that too, eh? <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, I didn't get it. I didn't receive it. And it's like, yes, you did. Girl, I know you opened it at 9.31 p.m. <laughs> exactly. All right. So what is it uh, with your wife coming on? Um, like how, where do you see the business in like the next year? Let's say a year. So obviously today was an exciting day, actually. I um, I got my first little set of pamphlets that I designed myself. Very proud of these. Um, it They look so good. They don't look like I made them. Yeah, so they that's do. good. And yeah. You hold it, hold it up a little higher. Can you? Hold it up a little. Well, yeah. here's the front. Uh, a little higher. Yeah. And then turn it around. Hey, the camera focus. Here's the inside. Yeah, get away from my ugly mug. It's all good. It's good. <laughs> no, that looks so good. It's you know, I spent a couple nights working on it, and I was like, man, these look good. These look like better. And I was almost expecting something to go wrong when they went to print. And sure enough, my wife drops them off today. She goes, hey, they're ready. So where yeah, did you, they look good? Where'd you uh, get them printed at? Uh, well, I use Canva, so naturally that goes to the nearest Staples or what have you, right? That's what they all do. I think Canva and Vistaprint and all those guys are like, oh, we'll just send you somewhere to go pick it up if you don't want them delivered. Okay, so, let's talk about that a little more. Yeah. I, don't, I don't know anything about that. Okay, so in this case, I, I there's a reason why I have these prepared is because I'm do, I'm donating something to a silent auction uh, fundraiser for a special education program at a local high school, something I, I believe in. And I thought, yeah, no problem. I'll, I'll cover a, a one-time scoop for you. No big deal, right? So I made a little gift certificate. You know, let's get scooping, us, not you. Uh, and Ooh, I, like I wanted, I wanted to have, I'll, I'll show you what it looks like later. And uh, so I said, you know what? If I just do that, what have I got? Do I leave cards? Ugh. So I thought, okay, now's the time, Justin. You intentionally, secretly backed yourself into this corner. You better hurry up and make some brochures, bro. 
So sure enough, I spent a couple late nights doing that. And then I said, well, this is good enough. Let's do a 50 pack so that I have something to leave behind in case someone doesn't happen to win the item, but also like, hey, I wouldn't mind hiring that guy or whomever anyway. And that's that was the idea. Let's give it a shot. So since I didn't want to have them delivered because time is of the essence, mm -hmm. uh, you can have the pick up locally option or however Canva words it. So they go, well, if you want to pick them up, uh, we'll send you to your local staples, which is literally a five minute walk from my house. So I said, deal. Uh, and then we got the email. It, it takes a few days to do, let's say two, three business days, I think it was. And I got the notification yesterday saying it was ready. So I told my wife and then my wife just took it upon herself to go, <laughs> Hey man, I got them. <laughs> so, and here we are, I've used it for my cards before. Same idea. And I, and I like the, I like the promptness of it in that it's only a few days. It's not far, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And I can, I can do it. So. Well, yeah. And you can do it yourself and then you don't have a, I guess a middleman really. Cause that's kind of where I'm struggling right now to get some flyers made. I'm like, yeah. What do I do? I ordered some signs from um, Alibaba. From yeah, China. okay. I don't, I don't know when they're gonna be here, but yeah. I got them at a dollar, a dollar thirty-five per sign. Okay. But I'm like, we'll see. You run that risk, right, of yeah. it not working out. A perfectly good example. I did a fifty pack, which cost me like sixty bucks um, or ten dollars American with the exchange. Um, and uh, I know, knowingly, I'm like, okay, well, the next time I do that right? I'm going to do the big kahuna package. I'll do a thousand because that's where the savings okay, is, cheaper. right? It'll cost me 30 something cents versus a dollar something. Knowing that my plan for this year, I've got one neighborhood that I'm targeting and I plan on taking them by hand on a weekend since we don't usually scoop on the weekend for regulars. And I'll just make my way around, listen for dogs and la 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 in the mailboxes and away you go. Occasionally knock on a door. You can't be afraid. You're I you can't be afraid to know because you're gonna hear it a lot. So start getting used to it. And that's my plan. I do want to put a disclaimer for our American folks. We cannot put flyers in mailbox. That's illegal and that's a federal offense. Oh, so okay. Americans do not do that. Fair enough. Canadians, you're good to go. Hashtag not legal advice. <laughs> Hashtag don't do that in the Hashtag state. don't do that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but I think if you do like a rubber band, we can put them on the side of the mailbox, like on mm. the little little red thing that they put up. Or um, what about door knockers? You can. You can. Okay. There's just some there's some cities that don't allow it's called like handbills. You're not mm. allowed to put those out, but Whatever, if you're quick enough, you do what you got to do. Hashtag Google it. Yeah. Just Hashtag research. educate yourself. Yeah. Just do your research, you know? Yes, always. All right, cool. So you're working your, your full-time job. You got um, wonderful teammates that's running this for you. you. Your wife is starting to get involved. You have an amazing support system. Mm -hmm. Do I got everything right? Yeah. Okay. Now what? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Now what? And since we're talking about marketing... Yeah. Okay, we're on this. We we're going here, aren't we? We got to okay. talk about the magazine. Okay, so yeah, he, I think, so that's how we're going to call them. We're going to call them the magazine because I was <laughs> thinking about this earlier and I'm thinking I can't name drop them. Right. Um, and the reason why I can't name drop them, we'll get into a little bit later. Uh, so long and short of it, um, I was contacted by someone who was a rep on behalf of a, a magazine in the area that gets you know, very specific magazine, right? They, they serve as certain communities, right? Not necessarily down to where it's subdivisions, but it's something like that. Um, and it's direct mail. They get it every month, whatever. And it's all about, you know, goings on in the community. So I was told, hey, you know, maybe we could Maybe this could be of benefit, you know, benefit. Benefit isn't a word. Benefit is the word. There you go. Good English. Um, benefit to you uh, to be a part of this. And I said, well, that's great because where you are is where I want to be. These are a few communities that I've been scratching and clawing and trying to get my foot in the door in. And I've had some success, but nowhere near you know, where I, where I want to be. And for some reason I had this picture in my mind of if you do this, they will come, you know? And, um, cause those magazines are good at painting the picture for you. Yeah, I think so. 
I think so. Granted, their 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 design team who who put yeah. in who put in the ad force, they did okay. But looking back on it, I was like, well, given what I can do with my you know brochures now, I could probably do something nicer. Yeah. You know, so there's that. Um, we started running it uh, early last year. I think March. I think is when it started running because I got talked into it in like. September or October. I'm like, well, I'm not going to start now because why start now when there's no clientele? And their position right. was, well, if you do start now, by the time it gets going, you're already fresh in people's minds, right? Which in theory makes sense. But if I don't have the revenue to, to pay the quite significant amounts of what it was every month, then, you know, what are we doing? So we pushed it off for a bit. Then we got started and that ran for how many issues? six or seven i think it was it was, it was enough and uh by month four or five i'm like hey man um i've got no leads coming from you not one not two not three zero i've got nothing best case scenario when you post something on social it gets a couple of likes yeah no one has reached out to me no one is, you know, and, and to be honest, people that are liking it are people that I already service anyway. So uh, what's the deal here? Um, and of course, that's the argument of, well, you have to think of it, you know, long game. And I, I get that. Problem is, I feel that I was kind of sold a bag of goods. And although they couldn't promise anything, uh, th that's not the way the conversation went. But of course, he said, she said, what are you going to do? They can't right. confirm anything. So um, I said, well, listen, I don't want to keep doing this. And I know you've told me that I'm on the hook for three years, but this isn't working. This isn't working. So <clears throat> my, my calls were falling on deaf ears. And so I went another route and I got another party involved and then they caught wind of it and like, Hey, what's this? What's going on here? Hey, Hey, what's the problem? So we, uh, we eventually came to, to an agreement and that's why I'm <laughs> so I it's probably as much of the story that I can share. I almost feel like maybe I've shared too much. I don't know, but I, I'm not, I'm not worried about it. So it, it became a situation of, okay, this is good. All right. We're shaking hands with, you know, you don't know me. I don't know you. Okay, cool. And of course, leading up to this before it became that, I had educated myself, which I should have from the get. So that's totally on me. The amount of people who had the same story as me were significant. Mm. So, and that's where I'm playing the, you know, the coulda, shoulda, woulda, or rather couldn't, shouldn't, wouldn't game and thinking, okay, well, that was a very costly lesson that cost me thousands of dollars that in essence, I didn't really have. Uh, so let's not make that mistake again. <laughs> so I'm trying to be a lot more smart about what we do for marketing going forward so we don't have that same problem again. And I, I hope that now we're steering the ship on the right course. And I would rather spend my time going door to door, potentially, you know, knocking on doors and shaking hands, maybe not kissing babies, kissing puppies, perhaps scratching heads <laughs> uh, and, and, and hearing a whole bunch of no's than being out of pocket mm -hmm. for something that, that proved useless. Right. So that's, that's the name of the game. I guess the lesson here is if you get approached by anybody in the marketing game, especially print stuff and, oh, we run an exclusive this or that, really educate yourself. Don't be afraid to Google them, Glassdoor, uh, Better Business Bureau, all those oh, yeah. things and educate yourself so you know what you may or may not be up against. Because sometimes it's not always too good to be true. Sometimes it actually is that good, but I find that they're very few and far between. So really make sure that you're knowing what you're getting into and be prepared to lose that amount of money. It's kind of like going to the casino. If, if you've got a thousand dollars that you know you're going to blow and, and it's not going to come out of your groceries or taking food off your table, then okay. Just know that you're probably going to lose it. And if you can make peace with that, well, then go for it. I hate losing money at the casino. It makes me so mad. <laughs> <laughs> I think I have better luck at the casinos than I did with this marketing campaign. So I think I got to turn this puppy around anyway. So what would you say to somebody that maybe is not 
like, like a, not an aggressive personality, maybe doesn't have a lot of confidence and is easily talked into stuff and pressured, right? When these people reach out to reach out to them, mm-hmm. like what, what would be some advice that you would give to them where it's like, hold your ground. Don't let them talk you into signing anything. Yeah. I'm non-confrontational as it is. I'm usually pretty easygoing and I, I don't like getting into arguments, right? It takes a lot. It usually takes a lot to get me like really upset. I would just say it's not necessarily a matter of being confrontational or standing your ground. Just say, well, I got to think about it. I got to do what's best for my business. I got to crunch some numbers. You could even say, I got to talk to my accountant. You may not have an accountant. They don't need to know that. I talk to my accountant and see if it makes sense. Makes sense if it's in our budget. If it is, I'll get back to you. I like that. Just avoid the situation. Don't worry about stepping in and throwing a fist. Just shift to the left a little bit. Just move out of the way and just take it back and take your time. Yes. Take your time and really think about it and think about your business. Think about yourself. I, I know I have kept customers on. I've made deals. I've done things that was not in the best interest for the business or for myself because I felt bad for the other party. And my husband's like, feel bad for us. Feel, feel bad for your family. I'm like, yeah, 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 you're, you're right. Oh, oh my goodness. Exactly. Now we have wants and needs and feelings, but our business doesn't have feelings, right? We, so it's it's hard to 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 separate your emotions, your feelings from the business. But at the end of the day, you gotta make brain decisions, not yeah. heart decisions. You know. And that's why, I like tracking everything, and like you we were talking about earlier, coming up with like the marketing budgets and coming up with different things, so you know, like, hey, this is gonna cost, I don't know, whatever. Let's say five thousand dollars, but my marketing budget is only twenty five hundred. Can't do it. Sorry. Mm-hmm. And then then, yeah. then you're able to make those harder decisions that way. Of course. And and find other uses for that $2,500 that you feel might be more practical versus the 5000 If you've got it to burn, then so be it. But if you don't, be smart about it. Really pace yourself. Um, actually, on that note, this this is a good sh- time to share some tidbit of information that I, that I heard recently. It's really stuck with me and I love sharing it. Um, especially if you're unfamiliar on how to do something like I, I didn't know graphic design or anything like that, but I was able to pull the brochures off. I'm not familiar with marketing and SEO and all these other things, but I'm, I'm taking the time to learn. Um, and I think that's really important. And this doesn't just apply to our industry. I think it applies to anyone and everyone. If there's a job that you're trying to get, or, or an industry you're trying to get into or anything like that, and you're unfamiliar with it, it doesn't mean it's a no. It means you need to take the time to learn. And this tidbit that I learned is um, from someone who, who did a lot of, he was a podcast producer, very well-known, things like that. Uh, he was reflecting back on some of his earlier time during his video editing days, working for other companies who did movies and TV and stuff. And he had about seven years experience by this point. And he was working alongside someone who only had three. And this guy was about the same age as him. But this guy with only three years experience was blowing him out of the water in terms of what he was able to do and things that he knew about. So obviously the conversation was, hey, dude, how, how, when did you learn all this stuff? And the answer was simple. It was, I learned, I read, I I watched, I, I read up. And it's like, oh yeah, guys. You have to care. You have to care about doing this, right? So I've, I've shared this information with other people. I said, if, if there's somewhere where you want to get into or somewhere that you want to improve or you want to be better at something, if you spend, again, you got to make the time for it. If you spend an hour a day learning, whether that be Googling, because Google is your friend. Mm-hmm. YouTube videos, tutorials. You might learn how to run a scooping business from someone. Sure, you might have to sift through some bowl from time to time in, in learning whatever it is you may want to learn. But over time, you will learn these things. And if you spend an hour a day learning and you do this for a year, you'll probably be as good as about 50% of the people in your industry. If you do this for a second year, you'll probably be as good as about 75% of the people in your industry. And if you do it for a third year, you could very well be the top 10%. You'll be at the top in your field because you've taken all this extra time to learn and improve and, and learn all these things that other people in your field may not have taken the time to do so. And therefore you are more valuable. And in terms of what you're capable of doing, your business might be more valuable in our case. You know, I don't know much about SEO, but I'm learning. And every day I spend a little bit of time and I'm like, oh, that's what that means. Okay, this is what I can do. Oh, I'm improving on this. Or 
whether it be graphic design, I, I, you know, I could barely do Microsoft Word, let alone a, a, a <laughs> pamphlet, but I took the time and I realized, okay, this, I like this, I don't like this, I like this, I don't like this. And I learned how to do all these things. Anytime I get stuck, it's a quick Google search, how to blah, blah. And then eventually you might find your answer. But if you really, really care about your business and you really, really care about wanting to succeed and improve, make the time to learn. Or find somebody that you can pay to do it for you. True. Okay. <laughs> no, but I think it would be important if you're like, oh, I just don't know what to focus on. Whatever's causing you the most discomfort, like your biggest pay- pain point, focus Start on there. that one first. Yeah. Start there. I just bought, it's like a Facebook marketing book that um, Justin and his wife uh, had in the what, the group that Wes is doing. Okay. Uh, Sundays in, in uh Sunday sorry. scoop. Uh, yeah. I know what you mean. Of Thank course, you. the name's not on. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so I know I was like, don't say it out loud. Amanda, I was like drawing a blank right now. I'm so sorry. So Amanda was holding this book and I was like, girl, what is that? And she, it's about Facebook. It's a couple years old, but there's still valuable information about like the uh, the psychology but behind colors, the color mm-hmm. wheel and, and much more. So that actually came in the mail today. So my focus is going to be diving into that because People ask me all the time, they're like, well, how do you advertise your business? It's not strategic. It's just, I put videos out there and I put a lot of videos out there and I just, I say weird stuff and that grabs grabs attention. (laughs) I'm the same way. And that's, that's on my to-do list is I think it's time we start doing TikTok and YouTube and stuff because the, the, the image that's portrayed on the business side, although it is professional, there's always a little bit of that, oh, I you do it, like little things like that. And as clients get to know me, they're like, oh, you're a real goofball. I'm like, mm-hmm. yeah, it's I'm 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 really good at this. But other than that, I'm just like, I'm I'm nicer to talk to than, <laughs> than I than I am otherwise, if that makes any sense. Is I'm I'm really, really I try to be as amicable and as outgoing as possible, making jokes all the time. It's just it's how I live my life. It's how I survive out here. Now, okay, because I feel like I'm I'm similar, but there's times where like, is there times where you just don't have the energy to be as outgoing and you're kind of like, I just don't have the energy to do this. What are you doing? <sighs> Hasn't happened yet. <laughs> <laughs> there may come a day. I don't know. That's I, that's always been my brain going like, hey man, someone's gotta someone's gotta be the person. So not necessarily try to draw attention to yourself, but like, hey, just don't don't stick your head in the sand. Don't go uh, hide in the corner. Get out there. Go out and be somebody. Yeah, it's true. <laughs> you know, it's good to get out there. So, what's your plan? Like, what's uh, yeah, what's what are you looking forward to in this next year as we're gonna wrap this podcast up? Well, my 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 goal, obviously, the big goal is to be able to scoop at day, uh, scoop during the day, and tell jokes at night, since that's my other uh, my mm-hmm. other field of not expertise. Um, but I'm, I'm making strides to be able to do that right now. The main focus is to increase our clientele because we're, we're knowing where we are in annual revenue. And I want to be able to double it. I want to be able to be in a position where I could say, Hey, maybe it's time for a vehicle. Hey, maybe, you know, we can look at benefits right now. My main goal is to be able to have enough clientele to where I can tell my part-time people, Hey, you ready for full-time? Do you want to do this? Let's do this. Because my first goal always is to not look at what can I do for me? It's what can I do for my team? How can I help my team in their everyday lives? Because they're working part-time around jobs that they might not enjoy so much. So if we can do something to improve that because they love doing what they do for me currently, uh, how can we improve that? How can we make that better for them and their lives and their families and, you know, going forward? So that's my goal. How did you convince them to use their own vehicles? They do and they don't. Um, okay. Sometimes they'll, they'll use they'll use mine, but more often than not, they use their own because it's just how they get around. But I always I always make sure that they're they're paid for that because I yeah. know that hey, you're using your vehicle for wear and tear. I'm not just going to leave you. Well, you figured out. You know what I mean? Obviously, the goal is to try to change that so there there is a dedicated vehicle with some lovely art on it uh, in our colors and such that they can drive to really serve as that uh, billboard on wheels, but. Who knows? Maybe this year, maybe next year. We're trying. We're trying. Now, do they have magnets on on their car? Nope. Very discreet. We're just <laughs> just people in cars going to houses, parking on the street. That's. <laughs> I have one girl. She uses her own car because she's part time. And I'm tell you what, because she takes the magnets off and puts them back on, she loses a magnet once a month. Yeah, that's 
<laughs> okay. <laughs> like part of the reason, gang. <laughs> I can only replace so many menus. It's so funny. I'm like, she'll come in. She'll be like, hey, I, I lost a magnet again. I'm like, dang, dude. And so I'm like, I only got one left. So then I have to order some more. Sheesh. The trick, you guys, when uh, putting magnets on your vehicles, for those of you that don't have wraps yet, you want to make sure, obviously, the area is clean. And then you want to put the magnet on your dashboard to heat it up so it's bendy. And then you lay it flat on the vehicle. You don't hmm. ever want to put a cold magnet on. How big a magnet are we talking about here? Yeah, it was like, like this big. Oh, okay. I thought it'd be like one of those like honk if the kids fall out kind of things on the bumper stickers. <laughs> I wasn't sure on the size. I want to say it's like maybe a foot and a half or two two feet wide. What whatever is you know long enough to have the business name on it and what we do and then the phone number and then okay. it usually fits on the driver's side door. Okay. Yeah. Serves its purpose. Yeah, it gets the job done. Who we nice. are, what we do, and how to get in contact with us. Sweet. Yeah, for sure. All right. So I, do, I have one follow up question. Please. About how many customers would it take you to be able to leave your full time job? See, the hard part is, and and again, maybe this is my Canadian or, or, or us, or uh, us, not me philosophy is my focus will always be, can I have enough clients so that these guys can work full time? And then we'll worry about me because I have no reason to stop doing what I'm doing now. And as my actually employer had put it, that would be amazing for you, me, to have a business that does operate that does have someone who can take care of it. And you've got people out in the field and it's not stopping you from still being able to do something else because that's potentially another revenue stream, another stream of income. Right. They say you need, they they say you need five. So I've heard, but uh, we're still working on number two. So no, that's perfect. So anybody that's listening that wants to start their business, it's like, you don't have, you don't have to do this full time. You can, you have, if you have another job, you can keep that, keep your benefits, stay where you're at. And you are capable of running a business for what it's worth. If I can interject when I started that goal was so that I could scoop during the day. And so that was just me. If it was a solo business, just on me. But since I had brought my people on part-time who actually approached me about it and not me going to them, it's, it's been a real saving grace. It's like, I'm now able to serve my clients better by having them during the day. They don't have to scoop on the weekends with the exception of springtime because that's the rush, right? That's the gold rush. You got to get it while the getting's good. But other than that, like their days are pretty casual. Like start my day. I know where I'm going. Bing, bang, boom. Take my lunch break. Do the afternoons. Bing, bang, boom. Hey, I'm done. Okay, perfect. And everybody's happy. No complaints. Meanwhile, I'm still doing over here, uh, over here doing something else, knowing that I'm not getting a complaint call. I'm not getting a where are they? I'm not getting a they missed some. Like it's, it's good. And it sounds amazing. I love it. I love that you have the best of both worlds. It's it's inspiring. I only wish there was more of it. <laughs> <laughs> well, the industry is growing. You guys are creating awareness. I know that um, I've talked to Jessica, and she says it's a lot different over in Canada than it is it the is. states. Um, how have you dealt with a little bit of um, the backlash? Well, it depends how you look at backlash. If backlash is people's comments, you might as well talk to the wall. Like, right. I don't, I don't care, dude. Like it's, do you know what I do at night? I tell jokes to strangers with curse words. Your comment does not scare me. As a matter of fact, I could come back on you three times as hard if I wanted to, but I don't, you're welcome. Uh, <laughs> but I think the only, the only difficult is I, Jessica and I have had those conversations where the Canadian market, I don't know what it is. Canadians are very like, I'll, I'll do it myself. Like, I don't know if it's just happens to be more DIY oriented and I'm trying to make, uh, our business grow by just sharing the simple message of, yeah, but you don't have to. Right. Wouldn't it be better if somebody else does it? Like, well, I get my kid to do it. Is your kid happy about doing it? Does he do it well? No. I guarantee you will probably do it better. No offense to your kid. But, but of course, much like you shared in your, in your last episode with, uh, with Payjack, it's the, when someone says, well, why would I spend, you know, $20 for you to come and do it? No, 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 you're paying me $20. You're paying the company. $20. You know what I mean? Or more. You're paying a company and people seem to forget. They're not just getting Joe Schmo or or some kid who's going to come mow your lawn for 20 bucks because he doesn't quite yet understand the value of a dollar. 
Mm-hmm. <laughs> but you're you're paying a business who has overhead, who has insurance, who has you know all these things that they have to take care of. So your ten dollars ain't gonna do it, pal. So keep on moving. Yeah, that's the attitude that you got to have. I'm glad you brought that up. You have to think of yourself. You are a business Mm -hmm. and you have to carry yourself as business and charge as if you're a business because if not, you won't stay in business. You won't be in business. There you go. All right. Well, this was amazing. Do you have any last words for our listeners before we wrap up? No, I I, I think we nailed it. Yeah. Keep keep tuning in. Great resource for information, the YouTubes, all that fun stuff. And thanks again for doing what you do, because uh, we wouldn't be having this conversation if it weren't for that. I appreciate it. And I'm, I'm glad we, we were able to get you on. Where can our listeners find you? Uh, well, you can, you can find me. I mean, our Facebook page is Pooper Troopers Cornwall. We're pretty much there. Uh, Instagram, we post things like that. We're, we're pretty low key, um, to be honest. So if you're in Eastern Ontario, though, in my target market, you may eventually find this guy doing stand up gigs where the conversation is very different than what, uh, <laughs> than what this is right now. I can guarantee you there's probably more four letter words involved. I really behave myself on this one. I'm just going to pat myself on the back for that. <laughs> So no, that's I, got, cool. I got all my swears out before we started recording. So I think I did pretty good. <laughs> I've been trying to be better about not swearing on air. Cause I'm like, is it going to mess up the algorithm? I don't know. I really thought I was going to be the episode to ruin it for you. And I'm glad it didn't turn out that way. <laughs> Mr. Producer would be putting in like beep, beep, beep. <laughs> he, no. He'd be busy. He'd he be busy if I had job. it my way. <laughs> well, I truly appreciate it. All right, you guys. This one's in the bag. We're going to go ahead and wrap this one up. I try to drop a new episode every single Monday. And until next time, bye.